You're listening to the Crochet Conversations podcast with Ines and Mel, and this is episode 35. A quick question submitted by one of you guys about our thoughts on Ravelry. Hello, and welcome back to another episode. Hi, guys. Hi, everybody. I'm feeling much, much better yeah. in case some of you are wondering. Thank you for your messages about how I'm feeling. I just don't know what about it. Mm. I had quite a bad stomach bug or something, but I'm fine now. And today we have a quick question. I know we haven't done quick questions in a while, while, right? Yeah. Yeah, because I am trying to compile all of your questions and I don't always want to have them all in a row. Yeah. And you know, I try to intersperse the more fun episodes with the more technical episodes, but I think it's time um, somebody, to answer a question To yeah? answer, yeah, this one And this particular question was asked by someone in Singapore So it's part of our local community Right Right, and she asked this about six months ago <laughs> <laughs> And I just haven't gotten to it Because I, I felt like I hadn't had enough time To formulate a good enough answer Right, fair enough But I think the time is now so as you can tell from the introduction, mm-hmm. this the question that this user asked was, what are your thoughts on Ravelry? So I've had the past six months or so to really dig deep, you know, to really yeah. think about how I'm feeling. Because I've before she asked this question, I never really thought about it. Have you not used it before? I have, but it was just something that I go to on the internet. I right. don't I don't think about it. I don't think about my opinion on it rather. Right. So if I need to look for something, I'll just go to Ravelry. It's just something there. It's like Google. Some if someone asks you, how do you feel about internet <laughs> searches on Google? It's like, hmm, let me think about that. Right, right. right. So to make this episode a little bit easier to understand, I've broken it down into a few categories. Me and my lists. I love love yeah, making lists. It makes it so much easier to understand. So I'm gonna I'm gonna assume everybody knows what Ravelry is. But if you don't, and if you are based in Singapore, which Ravelry is not very big in Singapore, mm-hmm. I'm gonna go through what it is, and then I've split it up into three sections. One for makers, so Ravelry from a maker's point of view. And one from a consumer's point of view. So there's two points. And then I'm going to sum it up with some other, you know, some of my general thoughts. Okay. And um, some other, like, noteworthy things to mention. Oh, interesting. So for those who don't know what Ravelry is, it's basically an online marketplace for crafters and makers. Right, okay. Okay. It's um it's a collective of makers and suppliers and consumers, so you can have the regular old Nancy the neighbor on it, <laughs> okay, searching for patterns to crochet on right. it. As that is the maker, right? As the oh, oh yeah, oh, or, the, or the, the crafter, consumer, right? So you could have the regular non-maker Nancy the neighbor, <laughs> and then you can have you know, Yanni the yarn supplier. Wow, I like those <laughs> names. <laughs> who is also on the website. Right. And then you have, you know, um, Ines, the intermittent whip maker doer. <laughs> That's always looking for a new whip. On on the website. Right. right. But I, so just to clarify, I'm not on Ravelry as a maker. I'm just there as like a lurker consumer. A <laughs> lurker. So I lurk on the website looking for patterns and things to do or inspiration. Right. But I, in me and us and our brand we don't have a presence there yeah because it doesn't make sense for us which i will get in to in a minute okay i think i need to preface this episode by saying that i can only give my opinion on how i interact with this site based on where i am locationally so right. based in singapore and i think where i am located or where our business is located plays a really huge part more so than we'd like to think about what websites we usually go to. Yeah, of course, yeah. Because from a business point of view or from a maker's point of view, I don't have a lot of audience who are based, who would go to Ravelry. Mm. And so because of that, it's not something that's on the forefront of my mind, therefore it's not something I think about, therefore 
you know. Yeah, you go where your my audience, your audience is. is yeah. yeah. So I feel like I need to preface this. So I can only give my opinion from my point of view because I know that in the US and the UK, rivalry is huge. Right. But even in Australia, I think rivalry is a big website. Yeah. It's really one of the biggest websites that are out there that really focus on patterns for and by makers and creators. So. From a maker's point of view, on rivalry based in Singapore, it's not something that I would recommend my fellow Singaporeans or Singapore makers, because, like I said, it's just not widely used to promote a business here, and the reason for that is because Singapore is not big on Craigslist or Twitter or blogs. Right. Yeah. You know, we, it, the word Twitter barely comes out in conversation. The main source of contact. Between a maker and their audience is Instagram. Yeah, it's been Instagram. Yeah, you know, even Facebook is not so popular anymore. Like the general consensus here is that Facebook is where our parents meet, <laughs> right? And so and so we avoid it. And so we avoid it. And when I say we, I'm talking about us. We both are in our thirties, so we are in our mid to late thirties, and. You know, when we say the older generation, it's like our parents' generation, so fifty and sixty. And you know, there's just so much family, and it's Facebook is so linked that the general consensus here is that nobody wants to be on Facebook. Right. I think Facebook is so complicated now. It is, yeah. They try to connect so many different kind of things, and it's just and so it it, it's yeah, yeah, it's so convoluted. But anyway, that's my opinion, and therefore, you know, my opinion on this, I I reflect what. The community feels,、mm. and on the other hand, Twitter and Telegram—it's not big here. Even Reddit is not a thing, which I don't know why, because I love being on Reddit. But you'd be hard pressed to find somebody talking about Reddit here. I am not sure why that is. I think we're just more visual people here、yeah. in Singapore, maybe. So Instagram is humongous, and so if and if an audience member or or. Say a consumer wants to come and get to know us, they would just send us a direct message on Instagram. Yeah, and that's、oh. just the culture, and that's the way it is. And it's just, it's not just with you know crochet or, or craft; it's across the board. You know, we can have like graffiti artists who have a presence on social media on Instagram. Yeah, and, and if people want to contact them, yeah, they need to have an Instagram account. Yeah, and, and if people want to contact them, they do it via their Instagram. And for that reason. I can't. I don't feel like I can give very much of an opinion on rivalry based on a maker's point of view. Right. And also because I don't write patterns, right? I'm. I think here what we do is I'm selling the physical product more, more so in、right. classes.、Mm. So I don't really sell patterns, but I'm working on it. I know I have a lot of people ask if I would sell some of my patterns for clothing, and I will. But until that time comes. I don't know what it's like. I don't have an experience of being on Ravelry as a maker. Right, and from what I understand, is that the site is mainly for designers who want to put up their patterns for sale. Correct. I think it's more like it goes hand in hand. It's like patterns and information for makers by other makers. Right. Okay. Because people who put the information up, they would be makers,、mm-hmm. and only another maker or a crocheter or a knitter or whatever. Would be able to understand that and therefore create the pattern, so I think it's a good mix of both. But ultimately, I will say that every single person on the website knows how to craft somehow. Yeah, of course, that makes sense. So in that sense, yeah, that I would agree that you know, rivalries it's created by makers. Now, on the other hand, the other exciting hand, we have the people like me, the lurkers and consumers on the website, <laughs> where I think. Ravelry is amazing. Right. Yeah. You know, just to sum it up in one sentence, if you're looking for a pattern or you're looking for information on a specific material, you can find find it on Ravelry. You can find anything on Ravelry. That's the amazing thing. As a crochet artist. As a, as someone who crochets. So in this episode, I'm gonna talk from my point of view as a crocheter and not from a maker creator's point of view. Yeah. Okay. Because that's really how I experience the website. It's from my point of view as、uh, as a maker, and you can basically search anything on the website. You know, you can search by yarn type, you can search by keywords or patterns, or you can search by specific artist that you like or right, maker、wow. that you like. So if you say search up a keyword, say pineapple in the search bar, you could come up with anything from pineapple amigurumi to pineapple lace stitch. 
it, just everything in between, even like pineapple colors, maybe who knows? That's you know? extremely convenient that to is, just search by keywords. Yeah, that's what I think, and I like that I can search by yarn. So if you have bought a certain amount of yarn, say three hundred grams of a particular yarn, right? Maybe you know the weight or whatever. You can search that in the filters bar. You know, just filter out how much yarn you have and what type of yarn you have, and they only show you patterns that fit that description. Wow! So it's very specific if you know how to use it. Right, of course. A lot of the patterns are paid patterns, but you get an equal amount of free patterns too. And if they're free patterns, it's usually linked to a designer's website or blog or their page. Right. So you get to see the pattern written in the blog. Sometimes creators would upload a free PDF. PDF pattern onto Ravelry where you can download for free as though you're purchasing something, but if not, if it's not free, then usually you pay a small amount. I've not seen anything too crazy. It's just like less than ten dollars, and you can get a okay, nice pattern. Okay, so it's still pretty affordable. It is incredibly affordable, which is very dangerous <laughs> if you're right. buying if you're into collecting patterns like I am and yarn you know you spend money on that too but the good thing is that once you buy on the website it always stays in the website and you can add things to favorites or whatever or add them to your queue or whatever right it's called a library right yeah so you, you add, add them to the library yeah. so you can do two things you can heart different patterns so that's just adding them to your favorites list and you can then add them to your queue so you can add them to your favorites list without adding it to your queue your queue is basically how many projects is queuing up for you to do so one oh. one whip you know mono whip mel <laughs> would only have one in her queue yeah that no you could have a few but you're only working on one at the time Ah, okay. But for me, I would probably have like 20, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like 20 things I'm working at once. So I feel like it doesn't work for me that way. So what I do is I just add them to my favorites. And when I'm and looking for inspiration, for you, right? yeah, when I'm looking for inspiration for something, I just browse. I never really look, I never really follow a pattern to a T. I just look at the picture, I look at the overview, the general idea of a pattern, and then I customize it, it or freeform right. it to what suits me. Right, okay, of course. I think Ravelry X, like one big, great, huge forum that focuses a lot on patterns. And, you know, lots of people go on the different patterns and discuss and share tips and tricks as to what works and if they are like me and they modify something or they change up something that suits better for maybe like a loose or tight crochet they would put their information on, on or their remarks on the pattern page itself so really if you know how to use the website well it could be it could be a really great learning platform because you not just get the information from the maker itself but also from the other people who have tried the pattern and now have their own thoughts and opinions on it you know, that adds to it and it doesn't take away from the original pattern. I think that's great. It's like just reviews, right? Yeah, it's about like everybody yeah. coming together to talk about, you know, I've seen some um, some comments saying if anybody wants to, you know, modify this pattern to a larger hook, then you actually need half a sky more, for example. Wow. And then, you know, other people would comment saying, oh, great, thank you. You know, I wanted to work with a bigger hook size, but I wasn't sure if I have enough yarn yeah. or... Yeah. You know, or sometimes, depending on the pattern, someone would say, maybe instead of a chain up three to start every row, um, maybe a starting double crochet looks better. You know, just tips and tricks like that, that yeah. adds and helps the process of creating a pattern. And Ravelry gives people a space to do that. That's great, especially for a beginner, I think. Yeah, and so for me, when I, I know that when I was first, you know, trying to modify my own pattern, Ravelry was a great tool. Hmm. Because I can sort of see what people are saying and can understand and get different thought processes all, you know, yeah, all nicely in one summed place. up in yeah. one place. Yeah. yeah. So if you're like me, then I definitely say I recommend Ravelry 100%. Even if you don't know what you're looking for, it's not a bad idea to just go onto the website and key in something that you like, say scarf, and just see what's out there. If you are an advanced enough crocheter, sometimes just looking at the pattern, mm -hmm. You can sort of understand how it's made or get an idea of how it's made, not for you to copy or plagiarize their pattern, but to use it as a source of inspiration from you. Yeah, I like that. Maybe look at how they build it up. Maybe they increase in a certain, in a certain spot.
space or maybe just get design ideas that you have never thought about. Otherwise, just go to their homepage or, you know, they have those um, like featured patterns of the month or something. And this just browse and just see what people are looking at, what the general trend is going on in the industry. Oh, okay. Maybe sometimes on the featured or like the what's hot right now page mm. is what people are looking at, like the popular patterns people will look at. And then you can get an idea that maybe, oh, maybe beanies are the trend now. Uh, in or gloves, right? Or, yeah, or, or something or whatever. <laughs> and that helps you, you know, keep in touch with what the other people in the community are doing. And it's not just you because I think crochet can be quite a solitary craft. Yeah. And if you don't find a community that supports you with that, it's very easy to feel very isolated alone. And it's definitely fun to... Yeah, it's be, fun to yeah, crochet with somebody else. To know. crochet along. <laughs> so yeah, crochet alongs are our thing. It's called yeah. CAL CALS. And I think those are extremely fun to do if I had the patience to just work on one project. At a time, right? Yeah. At a time for a month straight. So <laughs> crochet allows are not for me. So that's just the general overview of what Rarely is. There's nothing too overly complicated about it. It's pretty straightforward. It's just like one big pulled together resource where you can go and get stuff like patterns and information regarding crochet or knit. Um, some fun numbers for you guys regarding the website. If you've been, I mean, if you've been on the website in the past, say, two weeks or so, they recently posted their 2021 recap. Oh. And I think that some of the numbers are pretty interesting. For example, apparently there are over 1.1 million patterns added to the website. No way. Million. In 2021 alone. Oh. And in that year alone, the overall number of finished projects that people have done is 1.2 million projects. Wow. That's crazy, right? And what's even crazier to me is out of that 1.2 million projects completed, over 1 million of them are knitting projects. Oh, okay. Wow, okay. And only 0 0.2 million, which is like 200,000, yeah. is a combination of crochet plus other fiber arts. Oh my goodness, why? So it's like crochet and weaving and spinning and machine and loom knitting right, and all right. that. And I think if I'm... If I'm remembering it correctly, crochet only makes up like 190,000. Wow, that, that numbers are pretty interesting. Yeah, guys, what is going on? Yeah. Why is there 1 million I'm a knitting, bit surprised. knitting projects done and only 200,000 crochet plus yeah, other things Yeah, the numbers done? are a bit too wide, right? Where are my crocheters? Yeah, where are you guys? I think this does go back to this conversation I was having with somebody, one of you listeners who messaged me saying that crochet isn't really like looked, like people look down on crochet a little bit in oh, the US. Oh yeah, I remember that. She's based in the US, so she said that crochet is looked down a little bit versus knitting still sort of reigns supreme, I think. Mm. And I'm not sure why, but that's I guess that's just the, the way, it, the is, way yeah. it is. In Singapore here, we are pretty lucky that crochet trumps... Uh, funny word, I should use trump. <laughs> crochet trumps knitting. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you know, you know, talking about trump, it brings us to another controversy I know that this Revelry website had in the past yeah. regarding them not being, you know, not letting people talk about the Trump administration and all that. And I know that a lot of people are getting angry about it, but all we have to say is that Ravelry is a privately owned business mm -hmm. and they can do what they want. And if we want to be on the website, we just have to respect the owners. Yeah. Who are LGBT, by the way. Yes, and we would like to support other LGBT owners as well. Yeah, so it just made us excited to know. I didn't know this before yeah. I did my research into this yeah. episode, but you know, knowing it just makes it even better. So, if I were to sum it all up, here are some of my general thoughts on the website as a whole. Okay. I think this website is incredibly geared towards the consumer and I'm not complaining. Again, like I say, I don't know what it's like to be on the website from a maker, pattern, creator point of view. So I can only talk about it from a consumer's point of view. And because the website is so geared towards a consumer, I am very lucky in a sense that me and millions others like me yeah. have like this amazing free resource. It's free to sign up. You do need to log in and create an account, but otherwise it's free to sign up. It's like a free online resource and that's amazing because it's yeah. 
you know, I love the idea of having artists create things for other artists. Yeah. You know, because yeah. my background is in arts management and that's what we are, you know, trained to do. My my Bachelor of Arts is in management. Yeah, and looking at the numbers, the resource is so huge and there's just so much things that you can find. It's, it's just amazing, you know. Yeah, that's true. But the, I do have one downside when it comes to this. Because the website is so huge and there are so many things to explore, I think it feels a little bit messy. I don't know about you. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can share your experience going to the site for the first time. time, But for me, the first time I went on it, I felt that it was extremely messy, very disorienting for first timers. I wasn't sure where I'm supposed to look at. Right. When you log in and the homepage has, you know, the blog post, it's a lot of information, but you have to read a lot. I kind of want a site that when I log in, I just log in and everything is more intuitive. Like yeah. the interface feels a little bit better. Currently, the website as it is feels like it was built and wasn't upgraded since like 1999. <laughs> right. I, yeah, I can see that. The design is definitely not modern, like newer, nicer websites nowadays. Yeah, and I, I don't know why they haven't updated. Maybe it's because... It's so big, they don't feel a need to. I don't yeah. know. They already have sort of like a hold on the community. Yeah. Uh, they can choose not to. Not to. If not they, to, yeah. and they would still get the viewers. You know, maybe it's one of those, if it ain't broke, don't fix it <laughs> yeah. mentality. But how was it for you the first time you went on the website? It was definitely a little bit intimidating. I felt like there was such an information overload. Mm. Yeah, I don't know whether for a beginner, the idea that there's so much information is, is actually detrimental uh, in to that your sense. experience. Yeah. I know, I remember for me, one of the first few things I did was to just skip everything, look for the search bar, and I think, hello, it's Ravelry, can you make your search bar a lot bigger? bigger? <laughs> yeah. For a website that works primarily of searching things, <laughs> your your search bar needs to be like splashed across the top, I think. <laughs> it should be the very first thing I see, right? It should be, hello, welcome to Ravelry, how can we help you? What are you looking for? Yeah, right. Search bar. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It should be that way. I feel like that's a little bit more intuitive rather than having the search bar at the side. But then again, I, I can see how they are trying to, you know, put information first and then search later because you can still click on the patterns uh, tab on the, the home oh, right, bar. right, yeah. And so you can, you can still, search from there, yeah. Yeah, you can still do that. Searching is not the main, you know, it's not like Google or anything. <laughs> yeah, I get what you mean. I feel that I need a lot of time to learn or I need a tutorial to teach me how to use the site. Yeah, then under the, hello, how may I help you search bar, here's the tutorial on how to use the website. I think that's yeah. all it needs to give it a little bit of an update. But then again, with anything, it takes time. All you need to do is be on the website a lot more yeah, and you'll be used to it. But for someone that's new, I think it's very, very messy. I mean, that's what I'm trying to say that I probably need to spend a lot more time, like probably a lot of hours just trying to figure out how to use a site first before even getting to the patterns or, you know, start doing my projects. You know, there are actually other sites that you can go to if you're really looking for patterns and you find uh, Ravelry too confusing. Right. A second option that I like is to go onto Reddit and just, you know, search something you're looking for and that's very specific. Okay. So, for example, if you want to do like crochet afghans, which are blankets, you just search in Reddit crochet afghans and those will come up or like granny square or just follow the crochet reddit itself i think it's more interactive because you talk to other people i think it's easier to talk to people that way you don't expect to find patterns i doubt there will be many free patterns there Mm -hmm. but if you want to talk to a community and get tips and tricks reddit is a good idea another website that i like is surprisingly the Yarnspirations website because it serves like Ravelry in a sense that there are lots of patterns but I think it's a more curated pattern it's a more curated list of patterns so it feels a little bit more breathable in a sense that you have space to scroll everything is listed nicely for you and Yarnspirations being one of the biggest you know suppliers of yarn yeah they already tell you how to get it off their website how many balls of yarn you need it even links to the yarn itself so I feel like if you're looking for more cleaner packaged pattern plus yarn Yarnspirations is really good for that right, you I can, can see skip that. the yeah. Yarn, of course. So if you have Yarnspirations Yarn, you can just go to the website, search 
you know, the yarn you're looking for. And there was lots and lots and lots of patterns, some of which are created specifically for that yarn type. Right. So when we were doing the Ogo episode mm-hmm. on the new yarn format, Ogo, I think Yarn Inspirations came up and did research into hundreds of patterns that could be done specifically with the Ogo pattern and colour and whatever right. options they have. Right. So I think that's really, it's more wonderful. So if for if you're a beginner, I think Yarn Inspirations is a good way to go. And you know, the, the PDF printout is beautiful. Yarn Inspirations really have it really like designed it looks really nicely nicely yeah. designed yeah I guess as a beginner like you say it's probably easier to manage yeah I agree so I mean there are pros and cons if you want something more in depth if you're a more advanced you know crocheter obviously yarn inspirations wouldn't be the place for you yeah. because a lot of the patterns are beginner to intermediate but you know it's just good to know what's out there for you ultimately Ravelry is number one yeah for a reason and I love using Ravelry, not as a maker pattern creator, but as a consumer, somebody who just wants to sit at home with my 10 million whips and just crochet all day. Yeah. So I love this website. I don't really get involved or I don't, I'm not concerned about any of the other, you know, fringe controversies surrounding it. You know, if I'm on somebody's website, I'm just going to respect what they say I can and cannot do. Yeah, exactly. Get my shit done and get out. Yeah. So there it is. There is my opinion or my thoughts on the website Ravelry. I hope I've answered your questions. Thanks for sending them in. I I do enjoy receiving your questions. It makes me think a little bit more yeah. about my work. Yeah, for sure. And if you have any other questions, you can send us a message on Instagram and Facebook or Facebook. We are at Crooked Crochet SG. You can drop us a text via WhatsApp at plus six five nine one two seven two seven four three or send us an email crooked crochet sg at gmail.com. I recently updated our Instagram and put like the link the the link stream. Yeah, with all uh all our other social medias yeah. platform where you can find so, us. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm really excited about that. I obviously I got the free one so I couldn't get all the nice features, but I think everything is nicely linked in. Um, and I've linked it in the show notes if you're if you're seeing this on Spotify or listening to this on Spotify yeah. it will be in the show descriptions and to all of my Asian friends coming from a business based in Southeast Asia to all my Asian friends Happy Lunar New Year to each and every one of you Yes, everyone who's celebrating this year I hope you get a chance to be with your family and to celebrate with your loved ones uh, because of COVID a lot of us haven't been able to head to spend time yeah Yeah. a lot of us have been separated from family and if you are unfortunately unable to see your family this year know that you're not alone and that we're all here you can send me a message and I will chit chat with you (laughs) mostly about crochet (laughs) mostly about crochet or you can listen to us check back every Sunday at 12 noon Singapore time so yeah so that's Greenwich Mean Time and with that I'll see you in the next episode we're getting our booster shot done next week yay so see you then bye see you guys bye bye